Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today, in case you were unaware, we have a brand new character rate up banner coming out in just a few days, or it's already out by the time you're watching this. For the 5 star rate up character, we have the Geo Polearm Absolute Piece of Ass Zhang Li, and the 4 stars we have three claymore users for whatever reason and i figured because of this we might as well make claymores next on our series of weapon tier lists seeing as how most players are going to have at least one maybe even two claymore users in their team or teams following this banner this tier list was compiled by my own opinions my own experience as well as the input from my viewers on twitch actually we went ahead and made this list together they gave me some new perspectives to consider that i didn't think about when i made my rough draft and changed my mind about a couple of weapons. So if you want to have your say, get your voice out there, give me your input, then check out the stream. For videos like this, I'm always going to want my viewers' opinions, and the best way to do that is when I'm compiling these live. For the most part, I am streaming on Twitch pretty much almost every single day at 9.30 a.m. PST, so whatever time that is converted to your respective time zone. That is typically when I will be live, but if I do change the schedule around a little bit, you can find out immediately in the Discord. So starting from the bottom up, up, like always, ignoring the 2 and 1 star, let's go ahead and kick into the Blood Tainted Greatsword. I think that this effect right here, um, every single weapon type, every single class has this exact same effect on 3 star weapons. And overall, it's we can just gloss over this one, it is, it is by far the most eh. Not absolutely terrible, but there are definitely better weapons out there, even better 3 star weapons. Definitely not the worst claymore in the game, but it is still going to be an easy D tier. And then following that incredible average three star we have by far and away the best three star claymore in the entire game the debate club basically what this means is that you will get five additional hits every 15 seconds with your claymore user that does 20 percent more of your normal attacks this thing is absolutely insane for a three star weapon one of the best three stars in the entire game considering that claymore users have the speed of roughly one hit per second in a 15 second time span you will have the white damage output of 21 hits rather than just the actual 15. This is insane for white damage builds, um, especially at lower levels, at lower world levels, it's absolutely broken, and the effect scales really, really well at the higher world levels, the higher adventure ranks. Especially considering that it is a 3 star weapon, which means it's easily obtainable, you will get 5 of these absolutely no problem. And based off of that, I think it is more than fair to put it in A tier for now. And then we have the Ferris Shadows. This effect right here doesn't really have a great amount of use. Spamming your charged attack is just relatively uncommon, and if your HP is full, it doesn't even work. Preventing flinching or staggering from powerful attacks or elemental reactions is good, but for a 3-star weapon, you are definitely going to want better effects, especially competing with something like the Debate Club. At that point, you might as well just pick any of the 4-stars you have acquired, just like the Blood Tainted, very, very average, very run-of-the-mill, there's always going to be a better option than this one. The White Iron Greatsword, however, is so, so good. I'm just kidding, it's god-awful. It is the only reason that I have created an F tier, because it is going there all by itself. You will, or at least should, have some sort of healer in your team at all times, whether it be Barbara, Bennett. On top of 16% at max refinement not being very good in the first place, this thing scales absolutely terribly. Especially in places like the Spiral Abyss, where a lot of floors only have two or three very powerful enemies, as opposed to a lot of weaker ones. Just at higher world levels, in 99% of situations, this effect is going to be completely useless. Like, yeah, it's... It's bad. It's very, very, very bad. The Quartz, I believe, was just a beta testing weapon and isn't in the actual game right now. But since it's here, we might as well include it anyway. These reactions right here are very common. You'll have them in pretty much any team. This, aside from the Debate Club, is probably the best three star available. Well, it's not available. It's not in the game. But it would be in theory. So we will give it a generous B tier placement. Then next up, we have the Skyrider Greatsword. Basically, this means after three seconds of of attacking with that character, they will end up having a 40% attack boost. In terms of white damage boosts, in terms of white damage builds, it's pretty decent but not great, so C tier is the only reasonable place we can put it. Now moving on to the Favonius Greatsword, I know I said in the Polearms video that the Favonius weapon set was super underrated, and it's still pretty decent for claymores, but probably not as much.
much as every other weapon class. Running crit on Claymore users is always going to be a bit of a risk because they only get 5 hits in a combo, compared to like a polearm where you get 40,000, but it is still a very good weapon if you want to run some sort of balance between elemental damage and then crit, because if you do max out your crit rate on a Claymore user, that means that this is going to proc a lot easier and you'll get your burst. I put the Lance in A tier in my polearms video, but I think that the Greatsword can only go as high as B, simply because of how risky Claymore crit builds can potentially be. And now we are at the prototype Aminus. I think at some point every single person has tried out this weapon on their claymore user. In early game, because it's attainable very early, it's absolutely broken. And we can assume that with these blacksmith weapons, at some point in the game you are going to get it to max refinement, meaning that basically you'll get a hit that does 5 times as much damage every 15 seconds, very similar to the debate club actually. Only difference being that with the aminus you get one very large additional attack hit rather than five smaller ones. This thing scales extremely well and it works for every single build. If you are running a high white damage main DPS like Deluke or Razor or even Beto, then it's great because every 15 seconds you get an additional hit that does roughly five times as much damage. And even if you put it on someone like Chung Yoon who is strictly support, it's still quite useful because you can switch him in, use his insanely overpowered E, then use the Aminus to get a five times attack and switch him right back out. It's broken early game, it still scales super well when you get to those later world levels and you don't have to spend a dime to max refine it, I think it is our first S tier weapon, our first S tier claymore. And next up we have the Rain Slasher. Just like the Blood Tainted, having to proc an effect like this is always going to be tedious. I think that out of every summonable 4 star weapon, I would be the most disappointed if I pulled this one, so it is going to be a low C. Moving on to the Royal Greatsword, which was the first star glitter weapon. If you have it, you have it. If you don't, you might not ever get it. This weapon is really good for critical builds without having to invest too much into your artifacts as far as crit rate goes. If you have any artifacts invested into crit it, even if it is substats, then this weapon will work very well for you. If this thing did have refinement, then it would probably be broken, but unfortunately, you might never get the chance to obtain it again. That being said, just like the Favonius Greatsword, it's very good for an even artifact spread, so we will go ahead and put this in B tier. Alright, next up we have the White Blind, which is the second blacksmith weapon, and this one is very interesting. When I compiled the tier list on stream, we had a long debate about it, whether or not it is good. If you have a cracked out 6 constellation Noel, this is probably the best weapon in the game for her, but that's kind of the issue with it. The defense right here, the defense boost, really only works well on Noelle because her constellations convert her defense into attack. So assuming you leave whatever character you have this on out on the field for a long period of time, you will have a 48% boost to your attack and defense, which is really, really good. However, the only issue, again, is this defense boost. It's useless on pretty much everyone except for Noelle. You would want an attack boost or a crit boost or even an energy recharge boost. I think it's only fair for now to put it in C. So the Serpent's Spine. One of my viewers on the stream was insistent that this was a very, very good weapon with the right build. He even sent me a video of someone explaining it. But after watching that, I still can't justify calling it a good weapon. First of all, it is a battle pass weapon, meaning that if you choose this, you will be giving up the Black Sword, the Solar Pearl, the bow that I don't even want to try and pronounce, as well as the Deathmatch, which could be a very good polearm to use on Zhang Li if you get him, and the effects are very, very weird. So you would use this on a main DPS build, a main white damage build with crit, probably. The issue is that if that is the case, your character won't have a lot invested into defense, into HP, and they probably will not be able to last being on the field long enough to get these stat boosts and make them worth your while when they are taking so much more damage. Especially in the later stages of the game where you are getting one or two shotted by a lot of bosses. You are going to have to switch them out at some point, which of course procs this, which reduces the stacks, meaning less damage dealt for you. The video, which if you want to take a look at, I'll put in the description, 
helped change my mind just a little bit, but I still don't think it's great. I originally had it in D tier, but my stream convinced me to put it to a low C. Next up is the second or the current star glitter weapon, the Black Cliff Slasher. I think that early game and in situations where there are a lot of weaker enemies nearby, this is a very good weapon. However, just like the White Iron Greatsword, effects that only proc after defeating enemies can be tricky in later stages of the game, and you can just completely ignore this stat right here because this one really takes the cake, especially if you were doing a high crit rate build. You would have to sacrifice your Star Glitter and not be able to use it on fates or on characters if you wanted to get this. I think that B is probably the best spot for it. The Lithic Blade I'm not even gonna bother with because it's not in the game, and aside from the high crit damage, this effect is god awful. And so we are going to move on to the Bell. So this would be very good on characters like Noel or Jin Yan who have shields through their skills, so you would basically always have a shield equipped. This was definitely meant for a tanky build. The only issue is that in later stages of the game, again, in places like the Spiral Abyss where there's a pretty strict time limit, you want to sacrifice your defense, your HP for attack. The 12% boost isn't fantastic. There may be some things about the bell that I don't know too much about, but for now I'm gonna put it in C tier. If you have information to change my mind then go ahead and leave it in the comments. And now we have the Sacrificial Greatsword. I cannot be alone in thinking that this is the most busted weapon set in the entire game. Having a 40% chance at zero refinement is absolutely insane. If you were to refine this even once or twice it would be nuts. Imagine right? Imagine having Razor built for maximum electro damage. A character that can already reset the cooldown of his skill by using his burst. If you put this on Razor, that means you can do three of his charged skills in like four or five seconds. On top of having your burst activated, that is insane. That is absolutely broken. Even on Beidou, who already has a low cooldown rate, this would be really, really good. On Chung Yoon, who already has a busted elemental skill. On Deluk, on Deluk! On Deluk, who already gets to use his skill three times. Do I even do I even need to say any more? This is by far the easiest S tier I have ever done. Most likely the best Claymore in the game, perhaps aside from the one we're about to get into, which is our first five star, the Wolf's Gravestone. Increases your base attack by 20%. Right off the bat, off rip, you don't even have to proc this. You just get a 20% attack boost on top of this one right here. On a main DPS, this is busted because if you get an enemy under 30 HP, you automatically give a 40% attack boost to yourself. On top of the stat booster right here, and on top of the 20% right here. But these effects are not just limited to DPS. Let's take Chung Yun again for example, which everybody should be rolling for by the way. You can get your main DPS, you can get your other party members to get an enemy down to 30% HP, switch in Chong Yun, have him use his broken elemental skill, hit the enemy one time, and then switch back in your DPS units who now get a 40% attack boost. The only reason, the only reason I am putting it slightly behind the Sacrificial Greatsword is because it's a 5 star weapon and the banner for it is already over, so it's unlikely that you are going to get it at this point in the game if you haven't already. You would probably have to spend your Prima Gems, your Fates, on the weapon banner. And nobody wants to do that, everybody wants waifus, everybody wants husbandos. And then the Skyward Pride. On paper, this seems like an easy S tier. However, I have seen videos, I have seen people talk about it, and sometimes that effect right there doesn't work. Like I've seen videos of people using their burst proccing this effect and then it just doesn't show any noticeable damage dealt. As a 5 star weapon, just with the base attack being very high and the energy recharge being high, it's still going to be a very good weapon, but the effect despite sounding absolutely insane just doesn't really do its job sometimes. Still gonna be A tier because it is a five star, energy recharge is always good, and that effect, if it actually works properly, is really, really good. But because of its inconsistency, I can't justify putting it in S. And then finally, we have the Unforged. This is the new Claymore that is going to be available once the new banners are out. Your attack is increased by base 20%, then with the shield up, it goes up to 40%. So basically, your shield strength is increased and you get a 40% attack boost if you have this character out long enough to proc the stacks. The fact that it's going to be on the next weapon banner is 
is very good, but comparing it to the Gravestone, it's arguably harder to proc that 40% attack boost, so I'm going to put it in high A for now. Which will complete our tier list. Thank you all for sticking around for this long. If you have, if you left early, you can't hear this anyway, who needs ya? But what do you guys think of this tier list? Am I right? Am I wrong? What do you think should be moved higher, lower? Let me know your opinions in the comments below. I will finish these series with the catalyst, with the swords, with the bow, so if you want to have input on those before I make the tier list, then again make sure to check out the stream. I will always be streaming right after I upload a video. So if you're watching this as it's coming out, just go ahead and head over to Twitch and you will see me live. Join the Discord for more updates. You will know exactly when I am making the next tier list video. But yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content you saw today. My name as always is Spinecar and I will see you all next time. Gotta work on my outros and my intros and all the stuff in the middle.